Being an IT professional, it's pretty much in the job description to move with the marketplace. Unfortunately, that usually consists of installing and learning the ins and outs of whatever piece of crap Bill Gates just puts out the door. So being a good dork, I throw together a testing box as I don't feel virtualization is a fair to testing. I tested first the 6300, then the 7064 bit ultimate platform. Much to my amusement, it's still a far inferior OS to my old faithful Linux boxes. Although I won't get into timing or truly scientific tests, I will give you my initial thoughts and gripes. Number one, slow boot up. Although faster than Vista, so was my Windows ME. Number two, slow in general. I would say XP was two to four times more responsive. Number three, looks like KDE 3.5. If you're gonna frickin' steal something, at least steal the most recent version. Number four, stability. Not only did things crash constantly, but it went through an infuriating process of figuring out it crashed, telling out, telling Microsoft why it crashed, and then restarting it without bothering to ask you whether or not you wanted to waste five minutes of your life. Number five, driver signatures. This part is really infuriating. You can no longer install the unsigned drivers at all without a registry hack. My understanding is that they want a decent chunk of change to digitally sign a driver. Number six, did I mention slow? I administer Windows systems all day long, unfortunately, so it's not just a matter of using only Linux at home for eight years and being jaded. It's seriously that freaking slow. Number seven, networking. They implemented this new home group scheme trying to dumb down networking for the average Joe. This is stupid. The average Joe was not meant to do networking, and when you engineer something to do two things, it doesn't do either very well. You can't be simplistic and powerful and yet use Microsoft psychobabble instead of industry standard terminology. When I checked out the OS, it was on a pretty modern system running an AMD Phenom quad core, 4 gigs of RAM, newish NVIDIA, all the fixings, and it was still slow and unresponsive. It seriously gives me hope. Even after the great Vista debacle, Microsoft is still willing to throw more customers away. Long live the Penguin people. Your day will come. As well, Mac. Re regards, Jesse Zettler. P.S. As if the aforementioned debauchery wasn't enough, Microsoft has decided to release seven versions of this atrocity. Windows 7 Starter, limited to three apps concurrently, Windows 7 Home Basic for emerging markets, Windows 7 Home Premium, adds Aero, Touch, and Media Center, Windows 7 Professional, Remote Desktop Host, Mobility Center, Presentation Mode, Windows 7 Enterprise, Volume Licensing Only, Boot from Virtual Drive, BitLocker, and Windows 7 Ultimate, limited availability, includes everything. Number one, can't pin what we want to the taskbar. Perhaps because we love the super bar so much, it drives us nuts that we can't pin everything to it, particularly the recycle bin and some devices like USB drives. When it comes to devices, it's inconsistent about what you can and can't pin which is really annoying as hell. You can pin certified device stage products there, but not any other peripheral. Even ones that are recognized as the same type, like a camera. I was able to pin my downloads folder to the taskbar separately from the catch-all Windows Explorer icon, but every other folder I tried failed. If you're going to rob full control from us, at least do it consistently. Number two, no upgrade install from XP to Windows 7. You can do an upgrade install an installation that will preserve your programs if you're wondering, files and folder structure, and all that good stuff. You can do an upgrade install from Windows Vista to Windows 7, but not XP to Windows 7. We all admit, it's really better to do a clean install anyway, and leapfrogging two generations of OS's is bound to cause all kinds of headaches, but a hefty chunk of people will upgrade from XP to 7, especially on netbooks. Upgrading XP to Vista was doable. And Windows 7 is, structurally speaking, a lot like Vista. So what's the deal? Hmm. Migration tools are nice, but they're no match for a simple upgrade wizard. 
So people from going from XP to Windows 7, if they don't do a clean install, you're going to have to buy Vista 2. Number three, ejecting devices requires too many clicks. We love device staging and all, but ejecting a plain old card reader requires two different menus and more clicks than I care to count as I shuffle from menu to menu. Just like it was in Vista. This is dumb. Sometimes it's just easier to yank out the drive and deal with an angry alert message. Two clicks max, please. Update. Okay, looks like we're doing it wrong. You can actually pop up a list of attached devices from the safety remove hardware icon where you click the device and it ejects requiring a grand total of two clicks, which is what we wanted. If you actually click where it says safely remove hardware, it will, it will pop up a menu and you got to click some more. This could be more apparent to the user, I think. Number four, desktop gadgets suck. More people will use gadgets now that they don't start off in the sidebar by default. Yes, you can rip them off the sidebar and scatter them around in Vista, but it's still more of an ordeal. But even if gadgets are more accessible than ever, there's a problem. Most of them are pretty frickin' terrible. With nothing like the quality or polish of OS X's dashboard ecosystem, or even Yahoo's confabulator. So we only use a few of them. Hopefully this gets better by the time Windows 7 is all final. Number 5. When does Media Player blows? Yeah, it now natively supports more than 3.5 codecs. But try actually figuring out how to use its great new features. The interface is yucky and cluttered, a consequence of trying to simplify a program that's gotten really unwildly and it's sprouted feature tentacles all over the years. Before you even start, the writer of this story is not a huge fan of iTunes either, but its library UI is tons better. Our attempts to play music off of a network drive, for instance, went nowhere on one computer and produced, and produced ugly results on another. Because it's so unintuitive, with controls and features hidden like surprises, there's really no argument for, for saving Media Player. It's not like anyone actually likes it anyway. Windows Media Center and Zune software look and feel great. So how about letting those guys build a whole new one from scratch? Number six, sleep and hibernation are still crap shots. This may sound like a beta complaint, but it's been a real problem in Windows for a while. Sometimes your computer will come out of sleep or hibernation. Sleep is much better than hibernation though, and sometimes it won't. Please, Microsoft, make it work. Number seven, the control panel is a mess. Look at that crap. No, really. Just look at it. The simple layout literally hides what you're looking for. Not only that, but with all the advancements, Control Panel is no longer really the single central hub for getting everything done, tinker-wise. With all the great UI work you've done in Windows 7, don't tell us you really couldn't do any better with this. Come on, guys.